think about that. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship this morning. Oh, my gosh. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad that you're here, either in this sanctuary or worshiping with us from wherever you are at home. Today, so what do you notice that's different? Purple. <laughs> Today is the first Sunday of Lent. And so we come into this season of self-reflection, the season of concentration, the season of thinking about our relationship to God and, and getting ourselves prepared as we walk with Jesus through this journey of the last part of his life here on earth. And so we know that in that relationship, God is present, and God is present with us now as we turn our thoughts and our attentions to God to worship, allowing God to speak to us and give us guidance and direction. There were a couple things that popped on the screen coming up in the next couple of weeks, some meetings and things, and, and we are going to start a coffee hour on the 20th. I'm so ready to just sit down and have a cup of coffee with y'all and a cookie. We haven't had a chance to do that for so long, and so we'll be doing that. That'll be coming up. So uh, some things coming up, and, and you'll know about that. So I invite you to stand as we call ourselves to worship and uh, join in that uh, call to worship that's printed on the screen. Let's stand together. Source of life and all the gifts that add meaning to our days, we rejoice in your goodness and give thanks for your saving activity among us. You have heard our cries and provided the help we need. You guide our decision-making when we seek your aid. Make us aware of your presence in this time and place, that we may be for one another channels of your forgiveness and love. Our opening hymn, Take Time to Be Holy. Hi. Hi. 
Yeah, you see. Excellent. How are you? Are you good? Oh, sorry, I almost said it. How is everybody? Are you good? Any news for me? No? No, well, wait excited? a minute. Well, tell her what's happening Tuesday. We switch the colors, all the colors to purple. It's really kind of cool. Well, there you go. You have you have purple shoes. Did you wear those on purpose today? Because it was. <laughs> so let's think about Purple Day, okay? So we today is the first day of a of a different time in our church year called Lent, okay? Which is you know just the word that we use for this time starting right now. And when we get to Easter, you know, like at Christmas, where we talk about that big word Advent, those weeks we have to wait. Okay, so Lent is very similar. At Lent, we have to wait till we get to Easter, and we study the life of Jesus and what all He went through from now till the time we get to Easter. That's what Lent is about. Do you know what the word means? It's a season of the year where things start to blossom and bud. What season is that? Spring. spring. So Lent means spring. It's the words what the word means. Springtime. Okay? The springtime of our soul is what it means. It means kind of like we take this time to sort of see what, hmm, what does God mean to us? What, what's, what's the big deal? Why is it so important? And we start out today with the story of Jesus. He gets to, he goes to the into the wilderness to pray and he he experiences some temptation there from the devil that the, the devil wants to kind of tease him about stuff and get him to try to do things that he knows he doesn't want to do. So that starts off our season of Lent and we talk about things. So, so today being the first Sunday of Lent, okay, and Lent goes for 40 days, not counting Sundays, okay, so 40 days. People often like give up something for Lent or they and it's something you sometimes hear people do that. They they take this time to do that, um, like eating candy. Or anybody give up sugar? I always try give up sugar for Lent. <laughs> give up coffee for Lent. Give up this for Lent. Yeah, some people do that. Okay, for this forty day period, if Sundays don't count, so then you just like all of it. Okay, but the other thing maybe to think about is instead of giving up something, how could we be different? could we sort of do different? Like, what could we take on instead of giving up? Could we take on maybe a commitment to, to being nicer or a commitment to helping out without being asked or things like that, things that we could do? Um, Jesus spent that time in the wilderness kind of getting <coughs> together with God. How can we spend this time thinking about what does church mean? Why, why do we, we want to do this? And, and and what does God mean? So that's kind of what we do in Lent. So I made you, or not made you, but I brought you pieces of purple fabric, okay? Where you, you can do whatever you want with it, just hang it up somewhere in your room or something where you can see it and you can remind it that today's purple day, but it's the season of Lent, and Lent causes us to think about what God means in our lives, okay? And we'll talk more about that as we get to the end when we get to Easter, okay? I know, it's very subtle. So, there you go. Okay? All right. So that's what we're going to do. You take that home, put it somewhere where you can see it, and we'll talk about it as we keep going. All right? So let's have a prayer about that. We're going to fold our hands. We're going to say, Dear God, just as Jesus spent time in the wilderness to prepare for doing your work on earth, help us to 
use this special time of year to prepare our hearts for serving you in our world. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks guys. Oh, you want the worksheet? Yes, I'll put the cover on. There you go. There you go. All right. There's the kids' worksheet for today that goes with it. All right. So I do encourage all of you to find something purple. Two of these, you can grab or find something at home that is purple, something that you can set prominently uh, where you can see it throughout this season of Lent, reminding you that this is the season of preparation as we prepare our hearts for what's to come in the life of Jesus and what that means for us. So, something to, to think about. So, on our first Sunday of Lent, we will join together in prayer, offering, allowing me to speak to God on our behalf but coming to God in prayer for this time and for this season and for our hearts and what it means, what, why, we, why we do things differently this season. So I invite you to be in an attitude of prayer, a prayer based on our scripture today from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, followed by our Lord's Prayer. So come to God in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, we come to you on this first Sunday of Lent, a season of repentance, a season of self-examination, a season of silence and waiting for the leading of your Holy Spirit. Through your Spirit, you led us into temptation of Jesus 40 days in the wilderness where our lives are laid bare and we come here face to face with our desire for power over our own lives and the lives of friends and enemies and maybe even power over you. Open us to your grace and mercy, your love and provision as we confront those temptations in our lives, the demons that try to run our world. Give us the power of your son that we may also throw off the powers of sin and the forces of selfishness and pride the forces that keep us from confronting the truth about our lives and the world. During this season of Lent, O oh God, save us from ourselves and open us to the new life of the Holy Spirit, a life of faith and hope and love. May we resist the temptation to find our rest in places that ignore the cries of injustice. May we use this season of Lent to empty ourselves of all that makes us deaf to the word, the word of God. We ask that you hear our prayer today, our prayer of confession. We ask that you hear our plea for guidance, not just for today, but for this entire season of preparation. Gracious God, forgive us the temptations that we face. Oh, not the big ones, God, but the little ones, like thinking we know what's best, always having to have our own way, sharing our opinions without being asked. Forgive us these temptations and so many others as we come to you in this season, oh God. Hear this prayer that I pray on behalf of this church family, and yet hear us together as we come as a family of faith, praying the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. So let's talk about that. Now, we have talked about the story, the story of the temptation of Jesus is always the first Sunday of Lent, and, but it comes in different versions. And we have talked about the story of the temptation of Jesus not too long ago, 
But we talked about Luke's version of the story. So today, starting off this season of Lent, we're going to talk about Mark's version of the story, okay? So it goes like this, and the thing you have to understand about the Gospel of Mark is he's, he must have been an introvert. That's all I can say. I mean, he's very short on details. Very short. Doesn't give us much to go on, okay? But we get little snippets. It's like somebody who doesn't say much, but when they do, it's really important. That's kind of what we have in the book of Mark. So we're going to take a look at that today. We're going to start with, uh, on the first chapter of, of Mark, starting with verse 9. Okay, here we go. One day, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan River. And when Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens split open and the Holy Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my beloved son, and I am fully pleased with you. Where have you heard those words before? Last year, right? Immediately the Holy <laughs> Spirit compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, and he was there for 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was out among the wild animals, and the angels took care of him. Later on, after John was arrested by Herod Antipas, Jesus went to Galilee to preach God's good news. At last the time has come, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Turn from your sins and believe the good news. So we're going to do a sermon series for Lent. Lent, as I told the kids, is from the Anglo-Saxon word meaning springtime. And it has come to mean the springtime of the soul. Now what do you do in the springtime? Well, what do most people do in the spring? In their house. <laughs> <laughs> right, you do some spring cleaning, right? That's kind of the seems to be the popular thing to do. Same thing. Springtime of the soul. Spring cleaning of our soul. All right? That's what we're going to do for the next period of a couple of weeks. We're going to do some spring cleaning of our soul. This Christian season of preparation before Easter. Lent is a time... When many Christians, by observing this period of, of, of time, many, many focus on fasting or repentance or some sort of spiritual discipline that they want to do for this time, many Christians give up something for Lent, whatever that might be. By giving up something for Lent, it kind of helps us turn away from those distractions, okay? Whatever those distractions are that derail us and kind of turn us back to God. Giving up something for Lent is this sort of idea of sacrifice. You give up something so that you can turn whatever, that, whatever had your focus on to God. Or we might give up a bad habit. Maybe you use Lent to give up a bad habit. Maybe like smoking or like... Facebook or you know some of those sorts of things that are bad habits as a way of kind of positively turning our life back to God. I've heard many many suggestions over the years. I've tried many many things um, giving up during Lent uh, you know the usual chocolate coffee, sugar the usual Facebook, you name it. The idea comes you see we give up something for Lent because we get tired of running in those circles. <laughs> we get tired of those things that have their hooks in us that we cannot get rid of. Our lives are filled with distractions that take us away from living the life that Christ would have us to live. And we try to fill that emptiness with all kinds of things, whatever that is for you, whatever that is. So Lent is this time to go, okay, I'm going to not do this. I'm going to, I'm going to repent, which means turn around and go the opposite direction, make a U-turn, 
That's what the word means. I'm going to repent. I'm going to return to God. I'm going to refocus my life on God to be more in love with what Jesus has taught me. It's a 40-day trial run of changing your lifestyle. And they say if you do something for two weeks, you got it. So if you change your lifestyle, it's a 40-day change of heart. So for the next six weeks, my sermons are going to focus on something that we can give up for the season of Lent, okay? And I don't mean chocolate, coffee, alcohol, or cigarettes. I mean something that we can give up from our soul, okay? So we're going to talk about these in our sermons, something that we can give up so that we can improve our relationship to God during this journey. Today, we're going to give up temptation. We're going to start, start it right out of the gate and hit you with the hard stuff. Today, we're going to give up temptation. Temptations. They come to every one of us all the time. A temptation is some kind of trick or some kind of deception or some kind of lie that we tell ourselves that conceals the truth and even more so than that presents a falsehood as the truth. It, turn ourselves into thinking we have to have this and it becomes the truth a temptation might even offer us something good we might even be tempted for something good but yet use it in a selfish way temptations they lure us into doing or saying or thinking something that does not really reflect who we are a temptation tries to convince us with a false charm that there is nothing there to help us pick up the pieces of our lives. A temptation, in other words, is something that separates us from God. The first Sunday of Lent, it's always the story of Jesus' temptation, always. But it's significant to notice how Mark's version starts the story. Mark's version is basically non-existent. There's no frills to it. You just see it. He bap gets baptized. He goes into the wilderness, and, and, and that's the way it is, and he comes back. So it's kind of hard to preach on the temptation when there's not that much to go on for, our, for Mark, but it's very few short verses of Scripture, and, and it's very simple. And Jesus' baptism is very simple. Simple, but powerful. God rips apart life and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Rips apart our life and says, you are my beloved child. In you, I am well pleased. That's where I want us to get for Lent this season. Giving up those temptations is not easy. And folks, I want you to understand something. I'm not talking about the big stuff. All right, I'm not talking about whatever it is that, whatever it is. I'm talking about the little stuff. The temptation to think your way is the right way. The temptation to always have to win an argument. The temp that kind of stuff. I'm talking about this little subtle stuff that hits us like a burr under our set. Okay? The temptation to not listen to someone who's important to us. That kind of stuff. That's what I'm talking about. And Mark tells us right away, it goes from Jesus' baptism to the story of the temptation, and that says to us that we cannot resist those temptations without the presence of God in our life. We can't do it. God is present. We face that kind of stuff every doggone day. To say or to do something that we know goes against God's will for our life we know goes against God's desire for us. Man, we get caught in a weak moment and that devil goes, whoa, sucks us right in there. Come on, you can do it. You don't need God. Forget God. Curse God. Don't draw on God. Let go of God. That's what comes to us. And we face those every day. Do y'all remember that old, the old, I'm almost, I am almost not quite old enough to remember Hee Haw. I remember it because my dad had to watch it. And so, therefore, as a little kid, but you all remember the, 
the show of hee haw. You know, well, Doc Campbell, he's confronted by a patient who says he broke his arm in two places, and Doc Campbell says, stay out of those two places. <laughs> it's the same idea. It's the same thing. We cannot regularly put ourselves in those <clears throat> places that make us say or do things that go against what God wants in our lives. When we're faced with those kinds of things, it's good to take that good doctor's advice and stay out of those places. Those places here, those places here. <clears throat> the Bible teaches us that the power of God is so much stronger than the power of evil in our lives. We sometimes forget that, I think, as Christians. To talk about temptation of Jesus in Mark is to call attention to the greatest temptation of all, and that temptation is to think that God is not present. That's the greatest temptation of all, that God has left me. Something that happened in my life must mean that God is not present or does not love me. That's the greatest temptation of all. The temptation to think that God is not present. The temptation to think that we can move away from God's desire for us because God seems distant and doesn't care anymore. To give in to our temptations because we aren't worthy of God's love anyway. That's the biggest temptation. So the message of today, the message of Lent, is to say clearly, unapologetically, without any doubt, that God is present in all of life. The heavens were ripped apart. God was there and looked down at you and said, you are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. God is there. So I invite you to give up those temptations. To give up those temptations of thinking that God has left you. To give up those temptations of thinking that God doesn't care. To give up those temptations of thinking you don't need God, you can handle this on your own. Just say no, like Nike. Just say, just say no. Oh, that's just say do it, isn't it? Let's just say no if you did or something. But just say no. God is present. Say no to all of those things that keep us from being all that God intends us to be. So we set out on this Lenten journey, friends. Remember the truth of your baptism. You are claimed. You are chosen as God's beloved. You are empowered to set out in search of your voice. The work is not easy in this wilderness. And the forest seems to get denser as we go, doesn't it? It's not easy. But the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is this. That our human lives have been invaded by God's presence. And nothing will ever be the same. And that's where we begin today. The word Lent, springtime, springtime of the soul, spring cleaning of this soul. I pray that Lent will be a new season of springtime for you. Through prayer, through sacrifice, through forgiveness of others, through not bearing grudges, through helping those who need us. Let us start on this journey, beloved children of God, and we will be well prepared to walk with Jesus and to celebrate Easter. So today, give up temptation to think you're right all the time, and to God to have your own way, and all those other things that we're tempted and tempted to think that separates us from God. Today, give up temptation. Next week, Mark chapter 8, we're going to give up control. Oh. So, ready to go. Mark chapter 8. Give up control next week. But for now, let's pray. God, we come to you just asking for you to take away the temptations that we have when we forget to rely on you. Plain, simple. When we rely on something, someone else, and not you. We thank you for the gift of being your beloved children. Keep us always mindful as we walk this journey. We pray in your name. Amen.
So we think about this every time we come together and we gather around the Lord's table. We think about this idea of forgiveness and getting the opportunity to turn back to God. It's not that far separated from where we are starting in this journey today. We remember that Jesus brought his friends around him and offered an amazing gift of forgiveness and grace. And we remember that gift of forgiveness and grace every time we gather together for worship. So I invite you to come around this table accepting the gift of forgiveness and grace that comes to you just by being there and by offering that gift of forgiveness and grace to those who need it. Let us prepare ourselves for communion by singing Spirit of the Living God. like when Jesus was in the desert, we're hungry for physical nourishment. Other times we hunger for more than just something to fill our stomachs. The small amount of bread and drink that we have in front of us now is not enough to satisfy our physical hunger or thirst, but it's more than enough in symbolizing Jesus' own body and blood to fill the spiritual hunger that gnaws at us in this world. Here at this table, we have food for our souls. Let us pray. O oh God, creator of life, give us the grace to journey through this Lent with all that we have and are, sustained by the reception of the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Tested for 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus taught us to seek nourishment in your word to worship and serve you alone, and to commit our lives to your providence and protection. Help us, God, to see your love in the passion, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to observe Lent in a way that allows us to celebrate that love. Prepare us for these weeks of Lent as we feel both sorrow for our sins and your undying love for each and every one of us. God who comes to us with spiritual power, we thank you that these symbols in front of us, the bread and the cup, are enough to fill our spirit's hunger for you. As we take them and remember all Jesus gave to open the way for us to fully live, fill us again with your Holy Spirit that we may withstand the temptations of the world, that we may hold on to the words of your gracious love and spread that love as we pray now for peace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, and after giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, as you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus lifted the cup, blessed it, and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, 
shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us now share in this meal together. God's house for worship. And as always, as we have done the last two years, we're going to stay and pray if you'd like to do that. So after we're done with the benediction, I invite you to stay. And if there's anything that we can pray for, for you or with you, I invite you to do that. Our closing hymn today is How Majestic Is Your Name. I invite you to stand as we sing that together, followed by our benediction. Let's stand.
and follow in the path where Christ leads. May our words truly reflect our faith, and may our actions match our convictions. Amen. Amen.